All right, it looks like everything's ready. We're here in game one. We have a new matchup this week. No longer with the reigning champion air. He was eliminated by Norchakar. And speaking of Norchakar, he is our yellow undead spawning at the top right. And he will likely be going Crypt Lord Fiends as he typically always does. And he also oftentimes goes solo hero. It'll be interesting to see how he wants to play it. It is another undead versus elf for him. So we did kind of see what he did last week, but who knows, maybe there'll be some deviations in his play. But so far it's looking quite the same. Now on the other side, bottom left spawn, the blue night elf, our newcomer, the challenger, it is debaser, and he is going to be playing what seems to be a standard altar opener, but no Ancient War Creep. Which implies he wants to likely go into fast Huntresses without making any archers. He doesn't want to worry about creeping a camp at the start or anything like that. He just wants to head straight over and get as much wood as possible so that he can get his Hunter's Hall and so on set up. And there you go, we got the Hunter's Hall. So he is going to be playing Hunts. Now, this sort of strategy is a little risky against Norchakar's style. I don't know if Debaser knows this, but Norchakar actually makes a very early Nerubian, oftentimes before he even queues up his second Fiend. Like we might see him queue it up right here. We do. See? And because he has this very early Nerubian, it's actually pretty difficult to do any sort of harass. So the Keeper's not going to be able to really get in on the Acolytes. Uh, the Nerubian also covers, you know, this area, this area, and this area. And I don't think the Keeper can fit through here unless the ghouls chop the trees down. This tree down. So the Keeper's going to have a tough time to do as much as he would like here. But he is already here. However, the Fiend was stuck in the back of his base already. Do we see him go for multiple entangles? No. It is entangle first as well. He's just kind of poking the fiend here. Could even entangle it there. Yeah, I think the key for debaser here is to try to get a good detonate off and then maybe pick off the fiend after. Oh, the wisp. Wisp getting slowed. Keeper tanking a bit, but he gets a huge detto. It's like five units detoed, and I think he stole the troll creep. Yeah, Keeper is... Oh, they actually updated this. Now it actually shows the XP bar. It's not amazing still, because now, now it shows the bar filling up, but it doesn't show the exact XP anymore, which is weird that they got rid of one thing and added the other. But yeah, they're both... Both around 1.5. Another huge Detto, five beetles down. But Norshakar is getting his XP still overall. He's got the items, Ring 4 and Ring of Superiority. Probably pretty solid items, to be honest. Maybe Mantle of Intelligence would be better. But Ring plus 4 is honestly probably the best drop from the camps that drop that now. Because the other items are Claws 4 and Gauntlets. Ooh, but this is huge. There's not many summons, and he gets an Entangle on the Fiend with a Huntress here. The Huntress normal damage is huge at taking out Fiends quickly, and that's minus one Fiend. Keeper's level two. No creeping by the Keeper, and he's already higher XP than the Grip Lord, who's done two camps. So nice start so far for the Baser, but how is he going to finish the game? And we do actually see an expansion and a tech. So it's not actually going to be double racks hunts. It's just one racks hunts and pressure. Trying to pick off fiends, trying to slow down the creeping, and he's kind of done his job, right? He got rid of a lot of the summons, and now with two hunts and entangle ready, Nortrakar just can't creep anymore. If he gets caught out on the map, fiends are just dead, right? And this is the problem with not having ghouls or coil or unholy aura. 
is uh, keeper and well, hunts and even even just not hunts like archers and stuff are pretty punishing against fiends when you don't have you know things like ghouls up front or coil to save them. And yeah, he's gonna get caught here. Perfect timing for the baser. Not too many options left for the crippler to creep. There was either this camp or the camp on the left. The baser finds the right camp and immediately gets a fiend. Might even get a second fiend here. Two fiends going down. Can he micro the hunt away? The baser just picking apart this army, but he did take quite a lot of damage on these hunts. Two of them are red health, but the keeper's three and the next entangle is just another kill. I believe that's four fiends that have gone down. And this is why I personally feel like the baser's playstyle with keeper, you know, just getting level some levels on keeper or, you know, some good detonates, maybe some pressure like this with hunts, is just huge. And as you can see, it worked out amazing. He's got four fiend kills, I believe, and probably like three or four skelly detto that were dettoed and like seven to ten beetles dettoed like so much xp even stole one creep as well he's gonna try to creep this now uh he does have level two entangle i believe can i check it i can it is level two entangle and he's gonna use it on the ogre I wonder if it's actually better to entangle the trapper because the trapper gets bloodlusted. But either way, not not bad. Got the camp done pretty quickly. Tree is moving over. He's tier two. So we have nature's blessing. We do not. Oh no, we do. It just finished, I think. So this tree is starting to cruise. Look at this tree go. Does it slap the pig along the way? No. But the pig does block it, because why else would a pig be there but to block the tree? But yeah, Debaser, huge start for him. He's got so many pickoffs on Norchikar's army. And now with an expansion up. Meanwhile, Norchikar does still reach level 3. Uh, has pretty tanky and safe items on his Crypt Lord. But honestly, I think he just wants mana at this point. Because he's going to need a lot of beetles, a lot of impales. Oof, nice burrow, but there is the lab right here, which can just easily be revealed. And yeah, we do see the reveal, the unburrow. Fiends are saved, but it does cost the TP. And Norchakar sees the expansion. He knows he needs to hit a timing against this. But Debaser, looking strong so far. We do have the temple set up. So I've noticed uh, Norshikar does tend to go temple in just about every matchup, but he doesn't always go the same units. Sometimes it'll be Banshees, sometimes it'll be Necromancers. This time, opting for the Banshees. Uh, the Curse can be pretty decent against the Huntresses, but Necros also are not bad because Huntresses can die quite quickly to Fiend Focus Fire. But I guess he doesn't have very many Fiends either. A nice pickoffs here from the baser. I think that was three ghouls, right? Norchakar might just have wood trouble here. Ooh, nice block with the frost arrow slowing the statue. Norchakar is losing so much. And the baser even has a couple wisps here to Deto. Playing it very solidly. And looking strong here in game one. I didn't actually see what his tech choices are. I think he just has, yeah, it's just double racks Huntresses right now. Myco Huntress Archer, but I mean, for now, this is all he needs, right? Just mass tier one, get some upgrades. And with the expansion, should be fine for now. But he does need to be a care little careful about overextending here with the curse, with the wagon, the slow towers. Huntresses do die quite quickly, but he did still get a couple. Oh, impale misses. That hurts. Clause eight for the Crypt Lord. Norshikar might need to sell some items. 
I'd probably sell the clause eight, I guess, and I don't know, ring of region just to get even more gold. I think he needs all the gold he can get. So sell like the two expensive items and then just all in, right? But he's going to try to expand instead. A little risky play. He does have the wagon up low, which is a bit annoying for the hunts. But if Norchakar can just dive on the wagon, you know, entangle a fiend, dive the wagon, detto this, the beetles, he can still be quite fine. But it's actually looking like Norchakar is getting some stuff done here. He might be able to get the Ziggurat up, and the hunts are taking a lot of damage. The baser will get these kills though. He does take out the statue, will take out the wagon, but his army is looking weak and he might just have to TP out. Is he going to run instead? Naga needs to be careful. So many weak hunts. He really needs... Uh... Does he have tier 3 coming? No tier 3 coming. I was going to say maybe even an alchemist third, but otherwise, since it's nighttime, probably just get to the shop, pick up double heal scroll. If he can, maybe creep the, the trolls and hope to get like heal wards or buy heal wards from the marketplace. Either one. But yeah, we do see the double heal scroll and a protection scroll. And he might actually have some moon wells to use. Not a lot, but a little bit. There is one moon well here as well, half filled. But that was kind of what Norchakar needed. He somehow was able to survive well enough to get an expo. Now, that being said, he's still a little bit behind in XP. He's down 20 supply. The baser probably has better upgrades as well, maybe. He's got 1-1 one, one on the way, whereas Norchakar has 0-0. Zero, zero. But, and he has like the heal scrolls and protection scroll. So the baser can do a lot here. And we do see him just kind of overwhelming this army. Treant summoned, Fiend getting focused, Fiend dying super quickly, protection scroll used, and Norchakar just has to TP out. There's just not enough army here. And will the baser push forward off of this? He has a set of three Treants here. He can summon another set in a second. He's got a clarity and he has nature's blessing. So when he gets like six treants out with five armor from the nature's blessing, they're going to do a lot of work here. Not to mention hunts are not bad for pushing towers if there's only like one or two because the glaives will actually take out the acolytes. Oof, and a nice little concave here. The base are just kind of surrounding everything. Another protection scroll use, but the naga needs to be careful. There is no heal scrolls left, but there is a TP on the keeper. How much can he get done before he needs to get out? He's taking out the Banshees. Hasn't really lost any hunts. But can he pick off the remaining units? Nice entangle there. Going to secure the Fiend kill. Might be able to turn onto the statue and A-bomb next. He will have... Okay, it looks like Treants is the choice here instead of the entangle. And he has level 2 Forked Lightning should be available now too if he wants. But there are super beetles out, which uh, <laughs> these dudes hit pretty hard, actually. Yeah, 440 health, you know, around 24 average damage, two armor. And I honestly don't know who is coming out ahead here. It's like a, a wash, right? It looks the baser favored, but every time his hunts are so weak after. And he needs to invest like all of his moon wells plus uh, heal scrolls to heal them up. And we got the tech switch. This is probably a pretty good tech switch against uh, Norchakar. Now that being said, Banshees are pretty good against Chims as well. But Norchakar does tend to invest a little bit too much into A-bombs. As you can see, he's already got two A-bombs. He probably needs to go to the statues now, which he is. But he really just needs more fiends, more 
you know, more Banshees to get anti-magic shell and everything. But if you get enough fiends and you have beetles out and stuff, you can just have so many units that the, the chimps don't necessarily have enough time to quickly kill everything, and the anti-magic cell can slow them down. But no, uh, Debaser does still need time, and he's not exactly got a huge bank either. He's sitting at 57 food. With only a few hundred gold. But he's got his orb now, he's got a heal scroll, he's already had the staff. Uh, he still has a TP. With some treants, he might be able to push this and just kill the acolytes and TP out. But Norchakar is here, he already spots this. And Debaser actually can't fight this straight up with what he has. The hunts are no longer strong enough by themselves here. And yeah, we have two chims plus chim damage upgrade. Strength of the wild coming. I think if the baser had invested like maybe into like two one upgrades quicker and then like archers and stuff on top of the hunts, he maybe could have ended it already. Yeah, maybe an extra whisper too. But now he has to rely on these chims, but they are coming out and they can be pretty strong here. And this is also a nice way to play with the hunts. Skirts past Norchakar. Does he not have a TP? There's no TP on the Crypt Lord! Oh no! Entangle secures the Fiend, the Nerubian falls. And... Oh no, the units are coming in before the rest of his army. The Crypt Lord's down here by himself. A Banshee falls, another Fiend falls. That's two Fiends and a Banshee and a Tower gone. But nice impale might secure some of these hunts. The baser's gonna try to run out. Nice forked lightning, triple forked lightning on the fiends, but the Naga's taking a lot of damage. No entangle goes off either. He does secure one more fiend. And I think at the end of the day, that was like three fiends, a banshee and a tower, or two hunts and a TP. And then he kills off his own hunt there. And yeah. With the Chims coming out, and likely no Destroyers, because Norchakar actually tends to not go Destroyers, this could be pretty strong for Debaser. But we're going to have a counterattack here, and does Debaser want to fight this straight up, or does he want to trade? I think trading is fine if he has like level 3 treants and he does have level 3 treants sadly the hunt tanking a little bit too much here would like the treants to tank instead but he will be able to take out these towers and the acolytes and that's probably probably gonna supply block both sides can the baser get another chim queued up can norchakar get anything more queued up before his supply runs out too looks like they're both a little short on gold for that The baser, can you get up one more chim? He does. Cues up the chim just before the moon well falls. We're gonna see him take out as much as he can here. And then probably TP back and fight. And with what is this? Three chims, two more on the way. He could get a decent fight here, but the, the shredder taking a lot of damage. We do have the TP. Are the chims going to immobilize? They're still flying in the back. They are moving forward now. And the, the Crypt Lord's already six. Ooh. Level six Crypt Lord's going to be huge here. And there's already Web as well. The Chim's focusing down the A-bomb. He wants to get the XP quickly and just take out that the A-bomb with the heavy armor as fast as he can with the magic damage. Statue as well. These are nice targets to focus, but the Fiends are going to get a lot of work done too. But there's so much damage on these fiends from just the forked lightning, the orb of venom, the treants, and the residual splash damage. And it looks like the baser is taking this. There's a, there's enough chimps still up. The fiends have fallen. The banshees are about to fall. Nice splash of the triple kill. Triple kill splash damage from the chim. GG is called. And the baser hangs on in the end. But a nice. A nice comeback from Norchakar. 
because oh my the start of the game was as bad as you know it can be pretty much for an orc car right you got detoed a couple times for huge uh summon losses and he lost like four fiends or something or like maybe a hunt but he managed to get a, an expansion up just at the right timing where he could do so and made something of it but the baser does still hold on in the end we'll have the 1-0 all right here we go with game two And it is going to be on Tide Hunters, our second map in the pool. Uh, let me update the score real quick. Got to do a little bit of different scoring now without booster. So we shall have text side. Hopefully that's plenty visible on the right side there. But yeah, it is. Our player at the top left, a baser, up 1-0, and he looks to be going the same build. So favors the early keeper aggression. But how is he going to transition it? Is it going to be another expansion? Is he going to stick with the hunts again? There's a lot of ways to still play this, but I, I assume he's going to at least start with hunts. Question is, does he mass hunts and like tower push? Because we know he kind of likes doing that and just ending the game against undead. Or does he do something similar to last game? It is going to be keeper for him. And on the other side, Nortokar will be sticking with the build he typically always does, right? The Fast Fiends, the Crypt Lord, the Ziggurat out front so that he can have an early Nerubian to slow any pressure as well as help creep when he pulls with the Fiend. Pretty standard from him uh, for his playstyle. Yeah, we are going to have the fast Hunter's Hall. Ancient War is also positioned in his own base. Uh, sometimes you'll see these late Ancient Wars will still be placed near a camp. You know, maybe like a greedier camp like this orange here so that they can creep it later. But uh, the baser looks to be favoring having his base a little bit more blocked off instead. Which honestly, blocking off your base against Crypt Lord is not necessarily bad because level two beetles have a bigger hitbox, kind of like how wolves have a bigger hitbox and stuff when they're level two. And so they can't fit through these gaps and they can't like just, you know, have one beetle poking a wisp that the elf has to send units back to deal with, right? You know, we don't have an arcane tower or an Arubian or whatever sitting here or a Puro. We have to actually send units back, right? So it's actually not a bad idea against this playstyle of North Chikar. The level one beetles can still fit through, but the level one beetles aren't as big of a deal because their damage is a lot less. And we see a huge Wisp Detto. Four units gone there. Nortokar might have been looking over here as he's losing a ghoul. So a nice start once again for the baser. But he did take a lot of damage and lost a bit of mana too. Yeah, that was two entangles. He took, uh, what is this, 100, 150 damage. Meanwhile, Nortokar does get the camp done. We'll have summons now. Does the baser have more wisps? He does have one in position. He doesn't want to use it just on two beetles, so he's saving it for now. And I think that's the right choice. Two beetles is not usually enough, unless you like just need to deto them for some reason. You really want to get like the couple skeletons plus a beetle, at least. And yeah, we do have hunts. Two hunts, by the way. But it is the tech, once again. So not double racks, hunts, or tower push, or anything like that. Will we see the expo, or is he going to do some other style this time? 
I thought he might do the expo already, but maybe he has a different strategy in mind. Oof. And Norchakar might even be trying to expand. This is two acolytes being sent here, but he's actually teching. So... Maybe was considering expanding and then going against it instead. The baser trying to do something here, but has lost track of Norchakar. And Norchakar is on the other side of the map now. This tower being a nuisance, the baser doesn't want to travel through here where he'll be spotted and potentially slowed. Going to travel the other way around, but there's no wisp nearby. And oh, the wisp is going to spot this, but it could be potentially killed fast enough and the baser is creeping so he's going to be a little bit slow here to challenge this nice detto though hits the two skellies and i believe one beetle it's uh, kind of what you want to get killing these other beetles isn't too difficult they do have a bit of low health and low damage and entangle on the fiend he's going to go for the fiends no he's going to go for the the tower i think going for the fiends might be the right call here actually and just kill them. Although it might result in the undead's expansion getting up. And I think I think Tabaser might instead just dive the gold mine and TP out. But I don't know if that's better or not. What's he gonna go for? Looks like he's gonna go for the fiends. We do still have five hunts here, but three of them are softened quite a bit. He can do a lot of damage against only three fiends when there's no there's no skellies or beetles. Now we see a couple skellies on the field, but nice micro from Debaser. Saves one hunt. Can he save the next? Doing a lot of damage to these fiends. Going to use the entangle. Could actually try to still go for the gold mine, but there's a lot of summons now. Oh, but a nice wisp. Can he get a good detto? Huge detto. Two skellies, two beetles down, and that might actually be the dagger that ends this expansion. Without that wisp, this expansion was going to be going up. But that Wisp just saved the day. Getting four, four summons detonated is huge. And it also has the Baser looking at level three now. And we do see the Alchemist. I was mentioning potentially an Alchemist third last game. But he's actually going to go Alchemist second this time. I think he realized he took so much damage on his hunts and he was just kept running out of heals that he's actually just going to solve that with the Alchemist. And I don't hate it. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the best choice. It might still be better to just go solo keeper and try to get level six and tranquility instead. Because I think if your opponent's going solo Crypt Lord, you can afford to go solo keeper. But it's not bad either, right? Because he had to use multiple heal scrolls last time to save his units, and now he can just uh, heal spray and clarity. Yeah, Norchakar lost so much there. He's got one Fiend only now. But to be fair, this happened last game as well in some sense, right? Now, he didn't lose the resources trying to expand last game, but he did lose this many Fiends and Summons from Dettos and stuff. So we have seen him come back from bad positions in the previous game. Can he do it again? We have tier three, we got a wagon. So he likes the early wagon, maybe just to deal with the hunts a bit. But what's it going to be? It is going to be Necros this time, not the Banshees. And we're gonna have two towers from Debaser. Maybe afraid of some sort of all in. But there's so little units for Norchakar that I don't think he has to worry about that for a while. If, uh, if Norshakar can get enough Necros and Wagons, maybe Disease Cloud, it's going to come down to actually Debaser still needing to get good detonates off. But if there is good detonates, which should be very possible with two bases and lots of Wisp production, then Debaser should obviously be in a strong position with the Expo. But if the detonates aren't there, or if the Wisps get like impaled and die to the impale, the Necro Wagon can still actually overrun. Potentially. A 
players' forces are under attack. But usually Necros do want to have their own second base, and we don't have that here. You know, Nortokar is kind of stuck on one base, and I don't think he's going to be able to get a second base this time. But we did see him get a good timing push, even with one base versus two base against air in the previous series that he played. So maybe he can do it here as well. Pendant is a good item for him, but he does need to somehow get his mana up first. Might have to drop the Pendant, use a potion, pick it back up. Meanwhile, the base around the other side, getting some solo XP on this Alchemist, and this is going to be huge. He's almost level 3, going to get level 3 off this camp. Actually, might get 3-4 off this camp if the Keeper also gets XP. And that level 2 heal spray is going to be very nice. Keeper, does he get the XP? No, he's just out of range. Keeper could have used one little creep there too to get four, but getting three on the alchemist was the important thing anyways. Oof. And yeah, look at this. This is starting to look uh, look a little scary, right? If Devacer is not ready with his wisp tattoos, and he doesn't actually have very many wisps, where are they? Are they with his army? No, he's only got one wisp with his army. One, two, three. Four. He's got five wisps total that are not on gold, which is not a whole lot against necros. You can very well screw up here with your wisps when you only have that many. So a good timing from Nortokar could still look strong here, but look, oh no, he's so weak. Ooh, but greater mana with a pendant is pretty huge. If he can drop that pendant, use the potion, might actually use a smaller potion instead. Yeah, he does. I think he dropped the pendant and used the greater mana already. Which actually works because he has so much mana. Cool. And look at this. This is a lot of necros. I don't know if Debaser's... Debaser's doing the same thing that Air did. He's got so... Uh, he's got so much gold but no wood make wisps you know against crip lord and necros that wisps are good you can afford to make extra he's got 2000 gold and 100 wood oh no he's gonna oh no is this going to be the play can he get enough necro kills i don't hate this dive to buy time but he's going to lose everything for it is it worth can he actually get these necro kills he does not this one's going to survive i think or does it yeah, it does. He got like one necro kill and lost like two or three hunts. And everything's weak as disease cloud. Nortokar is suddenly winning. Oh no. Debaser took too much time to get anything going. Look at this. He's got tier three with 50 food, double lore and wind, but he can't produce anything. He didn't have enough wisps. Forces are under attack. He needs to take the wisps off of the gold mine here and just put them on wood. And then produce, keep producing more whiffs. Yeah, he's got so many in Q. Oh no. Can he get good Detos? Nice impale from Nortokar. And he kills all the three wisps there. Or maybe one Detoed. One more Detoed does clean that up. A Deto here cleans some of that up. But there's, there's more. There's still more skeletons in the back. But the Necros are starting to run out of mana. But there's still so many summons. Is Nortokar going to take this one? I think this is going to be a victory for the undead. Debaser. Oh, just a little bit of macro problems there. I noticed when I looked at his wisp count and he had like five wisps not on gold, which is way too little. Way too little, especially against a necro army because you're going to need wisps. And yeah, Baser's still trying to do something here. If he can get some more Detos, like, I think he, if he can just take the Wisps off gold and get some Detos, he can still kind of clean up that, but he can't really kill the Wagons or Fiends anymore. Or, of course, the Crypt Lord. Because he just, he just doesn't have units to do so. The Keeper's only level 4, close to 5, but not 5. He does still have a lot of mana to use though. We've got Treants, Entangle. He's got Pendant with Greater Mana Potion. 
So he could still slowly take out the fiends, but how is he going to ever deal with these summons? Now with these level 3 beetles as well. And these are tanky boys. Keeper. Keeper. He's got no no TP or anything. <laughs> Nor to car trying to get it, but Keeper will escape. <laughs> and just gonna call the GG. Look at the he had 4k gold at the end. Oh no. <sighs> Rule one with expanding. Make sure your economy is stable. You need wood as well as the gold. Otherwise, it's sometimes better just not expand at all, right? And yeah, that hurts. But nice win there for North. Okay, didn't instant kick me. I know before when I tried to play like Zhao Kai, for instance, on one of the Asia East servers, it would just instant drop me. But I thought it was this one. So I don't know, maybe the server changed. Maybe it's just, maybe it only drops if there's actually a Chinese player also in the game. Which would be weird, but I don't know. But it seems like it's working for now, so hopefully it's good. I think, what did the baser say? Like 190? <laughs> yeah. It is hopefully good. Okay, here, here we go. <laughs> Anyways, it should be one to one score now. We're on game three. Debaser crumbled a bit at the end of that last game, not macroing properly. Will he be able to overcome it this game? He's had strong starts to both games, taking out a lot of fiends, getting some good detonates on beetles and skellies. Can he do so again? He looks to be doing the same style with the keeper and no ancient war creep. And on the other side, Norchakar changing it up. So no early graveyard this time. Instead going Crypt plus Relics, but still with the Crypt Lord. So Fiends are going to be a bit later. His Ziggurat is also in the back here instead of up front. Normally he has it up front and uses it to creep this later. Potentially even pull this into range. It's like here. So a different bit of a different style here from Norchakar this time. But how many ghouls is he gonna build early? Is he gonna get a lot of ghouls? Or is it just gonna be a few and then transition to fiends at the 17 out of 20 food? Picks up the rod and he looks to be wanting to harass or something. Or maybe he's gonna try to find a critter here. Yeah, he has a critter here. I guess the, the scout acolyte found this earlier and he's going to try to steal creeps away. So sneaky little play from Norchakar. He realized that he's getting punished early game trying to creep his own camps early. And now he's going to sneak on by and potentially take out the murlocs. Oh, he found another critter too. This acolyte doing his job Four beetles already. He's going to take out the small murloc first to get another set of beetles or the skellies on the field. Meanwhile, the baser's like, yo, hello, what's going on, bro? Hello? <laughs> yeah, the baser sitting there a little confused. Keeper's like, yo, this Crippler is not creeping anywhere. There was nothing in the base. He was already teching. And meanwhile, Meanwhile, Norchakar's already cleared a camp. He's got a ton of summons. And the baser just can't find it. Completely missed him. He's got a Wisp here and a Wisp here, but nothing on any of this side. And this is going to be level 2 Crypt Lord already with two items. The baser's trying to get something done. He's going to be able to kill a ghoul, but Norchakar having three ghouls early. Should be okay on wood. Can always add another ghoul. He does have it queued up. Does take two entangles as well. Fiend is out. 
Could try to double entangle the fiend as well. If he gets a few shots off first too, he might be able to actually kill it. Will he go for it? He does go for it. I'm not sure if this kills on Blight or if he's going to have to chase it for like an extra hit or two. Meanwhile, Norchikar taking another camp here. He's going to be close to like level three right away. Oh, and Debaser missed the second entangle. The Fiend gets away. I think he might have been able to kill the Fiend if he went for the entangle, but this Fiend's just going to slowly heal now on Blight. And the baser is just, uh, it doesn't know what to do. I wonder if he doesn't, does he not even realize that, that, uh, Norchikar made it out and is just creeping? <laughs> Minimum 115, maximum 3,800. <laughs> so Norchikar has the better ping, but sometimes he spikes to have 100 times the ping. <laughs> A town is under siege. And he just resumed after spiking twice more. So I don't know if this server is actually better to use. And this is probably why this server didn't always look good when I checked it, because he's, he's spiking like this. <laughs> so he probably had times where he joined the lobby and was spiking. But yeah, Debaser now sees the Crypt Lord. He sees that it's already got three creep camp items and already level two. Huntress a little caught out, taking a lot of damage. That hurts a lot. That's 270 damage. Going to be very difficult to heal that efficiently. And I mean, this keeper is barely over level one now. And Norchikar is kind of at his way. Oh, we got an early AP. I think the baser was maybe expecting like quick tech to. You know, honestly, I feel like the baser probably checked too many cast streams and thought this was like instant tech into like double hero ghoul rush or something. I, I think he didn't believe that Norchikar even had a hero yet. But th that was not the case. Norchikar was just creeping his side of the map the whole time. And now he's got like a tower in his base that's not going to do much. His hunts are all weak and dead. The Crypt Lord's level 3. The Naga, can she get some value here? There's an archer added as well. But with these level 2 beetles, they quickly deal a lot of damage. This normal damage is huge against archers and heroes. And the baser is sitting here with 1-1 one, one against level 3 Crypt Lord. This isn't according to plan. A huge difference compared to the other games. And Norchikar is in a pretty good spot here. The Expo Camp's already crept as well. Uh, will the baser just try to expand here? Oh no. Is he waiting for like tree and mana or something? Because there's not even a camp here. <laughs> oh no. The baser's like, what's going on? All of my camps are gone. The Crypt Lord's now creeping his own camp safely. This is. This is not the plan that the baser had going into the game. Far cry from the first two games where he was in complete control of the early game. This time it is Norchikar in complete control. Oh, but we could see a Entangle pickoff here, but not close enough. The Keeper was just a little far off. Oh, going to dive for the Necro it seems. Not a bad choice. Keeping the Necro count low is pretty huge. But with this many summons, can the baser do much more? There's no more Entangles. There's no Wisps here. Is this a Wisp? There is one Wisp coming. But even one Wisp is not really enough because the Beetles don't die to one Wisp anymore. And he would also be dispelling the Inner Fire, Bloodlust and stuff. So you almost need to bring multiple Wisps at this point. But nice little pick off. He's going to get another Necr Necromancer here. Destinate hits okay. 
There is a heal ward here, nicely dealt with by the baser, but he's taking so much damage. However, I think he got what he wanted. He sacrificed most of his army, but he got rid of the necromancers, which is the huge part. If the necromancers aren't here, and the heroes get healed up by the moon wells, he can still actually deal with fiends, right? Like you can get some entangles on the fiends and just focus them down. Ooh, and we got, what is this? Double wins plus another hunt added. Looks like he's a little afraid trying to add another hunt, but also trying to transition into mass air, but it's going to have to actually be hippo riders and not uh, fairy dragons because there's no Ancient of Wonders. And he just now, oh, I think he wanted fairies, but yeah, Ancient of Wonders were not there. Keeper's trapped by the hunt. The baser. Both sides taking a lot of damage on their hero. Keeper, Keeper. He's got a TP, but uh, he's not gonna get this Crypt Lord. He's gonna have to TP himself. He will TP himself, but he might lose the Archer or Naga. The Naga barely is, <laughs> He's just trapped in his base with no healing. And the shop's not up. Oh, he's playing with fire. Norchikar's like, I don't want to go in there, but I mean, the wagons are about to take out the tower and all that's left is the trees to smack around. Oh no. The baser? He's playing so aggro with one health heroes. And the beetles. Are the beetles just gonna march in? You can just send the beetles on them. Nordicar playing a little scared here. It looked like he was going to dive them at first. Oh, now he's sending the beetles in. The Naga is taken out. The Keeper is going to be next, but he should be able to get a potion for him. And honestly, even without killing the heroes, the Elf trying to heal the heroes is also pretty difficult, right? Like if, he, if they're spending po uh, gold on all these potions, then they're not spending it on units or more moon wells after these moon wells die. The baser is just losing a bit of everything here. Some Detto's coming out. Might be able to get rid of some of these summons, but there's even more coming. Statues still have a lot of mana to replenish the Necros. And... Norchakar. Oh. The sad one Treant summon. Norchakar might be taking the second game as well. With a much stronger start this time. We do have a Fairy Dragon out. And no web, it seems, but skelly mages do take out the fairy dragon too. And GG is called. Okay, let's update this score. Norchakar is now in the lead. After, a, you know, some rough early games in game one and two, and honestly, Norskar really only won the second game because the baser's macro was kind of bad. He, he completely turned it around. You know, he did pull out the win that second game, but also the third game, he just completely caught the baser off guard with his different strategy right and he's doing it again he's doing the fast altar getting the early rod on the crypt lord and just sneaking around somewhere that the keeper doesn't see will the baser be aware of that this time will it be a different strategy and the baser is also going to mix it up this time we're going to see tavern hero will it be the beast man or is he going to go for something like a panda both are pretty good uh, and I think these days, with there being so many rings around, you know, you get rings from, you get a ring three from this camp, or a ring four from this camp, or a ring four from this camp. You know, with rings at all these camps possible, I think going some melee heroes like Beastmaster or Panda is not too bad. Obviously, they still would have preferred Circlet if Circlet existed. But I think Circlet's been taken out completely, and it's just Ring 4, Gloves, and Claws. So of those, getting a ring is not bad on these strength heroes like Beastmaster Panda. 
And yeah, Dr. Car. Triplord is out, Rod is purchased, and he's going to be looking to get some summons off. The Wisp is here, but is the baser looking at it? Or did he just shift rally it? It looks just shift rallied, but maybe he's controlling it now. Or is it just going to move back here? Did he see the Cryptlord going over here? And can he do anything about it anyways? I believe he's just going to creep. Oh, but he's actually creeping this camp first. I'm not sure if that's the right call with his Ancient War that far away. I think he could have crept this first and then while the Ancient War was walking, you know, creep this second. Because now he's already taken out the Ogre before the Ancient War is even here. So not the most efficient creeping here, but still more efficient than Norch cars. And this time, this time this little sneaky creep play by Norchakar to creep over on the side is not really going according to plan because the baser is actually creeping himself this time. He's not doing the early keeper aggression. He's relying on getting his own high level hero, this time with the panda. The panda does get the ring three, as I mentioned. <laughs> I was like, there's a high chance you get something like a ring and what do you know, ring plus three already? Do we see a ring plus four as well? Or is he going to get something like Gloves or a Claw from this second camp? Because a ring plus four is like... Honestly not bad here with all of the... Some, it is a ring plus four. Well, we got an 11 armor panda after two camps. Uh, no big deal. So just very high effective HP against this Crypt Lord lineup. Good luck trying to focus it down with just a bunch of... You know, physical damage and no magic damage. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nortrakar playing very defensive with his fiends. I'm not sure if he even realizes it's a panda, because if it's a, if he knows it's a panda, he can actually bring his fiends out to creep. But he is taking some pretty nice camps here. Now getting the shop camp. And can he get level 3 somewhere? But the baser is also getting close to his own level 3. And what do we got for him? It's going to be the instant expo. This is why he wanted to creep this camp right away. And it's very well fortified. There's an sh early shop here. There's a moon well. But what's his tier 2 going to be? Is he going to add the hunter's hall right now? Or is it going to be wins? It seems to be wins so far. Unless he just forgot the Hunter's Hall so far. We shall see. But Norchakar is also getting a lot of creeping done with just beetles and skellies. As you can see, he's going to get level 3 here, taking away the shop and the gold mine from the baser. But we might have a bit of a creep jack here, and Breath of Fire is going to be huge. Oh, but he uses it early. Doesn't secure the kill, but still gets it anyways with the focus fire from the archers. And the base er, should be able to clean up these beetles as well. They're only level one beetles. Does he use another breath here? We do see another breath. Not the best breath though. He does lose one archer as well, but the others should be fairly safe. There is a sentry ward though. Nortokar not using the sentry to take out that archer and it will survive. And Panda with that huge, huge steal on the Level 5 Taskmaster, denying level 3 from the Crypt Lord and getting level 3 for himself. Crypt Lord will be able to quickly get 3 anyways from either the Small Green or the Wisp or the Gold Mine. Gonna try to go for the Wisp, but the Wisp looks to be trying to escape. Will Detto nicely done denying the mana on the Crypt Lord and denying the XP, and the Crypt Lord still hasn't reached 3. And it is wins. Panda with wins, if you can pull this off, is actually pretty strong. Because Panda can actually take out the Ziggurats as well. So you can't even defend against fairies properly because you can't add spirit towers safely, right? The Breath of Fire is just gonna wipe the acolytes, wipe the wipe the towers. So you have to be very on point at always being ready to defend against it if there's hit and runs. But yeah, it looks like the baser's just kind of doing some damage here. Takes out a Necromancer, cancels the one Ziggurat, forces some repair on the other Ziggurats. And... Norshikar's just trying to chase. 
Can he get very many kills? He does take out the one archer. I think he might have killed one earlier as well. The others are also softened up. But Debaser's got boots, and if this Crypt Lord's not careful, there is like two more breaths. Oh, nice breath hitting the hero and the wagon, I believe. And the next breath. Oh, one more hit plus a breath. I think he could take out the wagon. Oh, wait. Oh, he's a little too low on mana. If he had a little more mana, he could go for this wagon kill, but it is getting repaired now anyways. And we got Hippo Riders so far. I guess probably just because he has the archers here. But will he transition to fairies or is he just going to go full Hippo Riders the whole way? Uh, Hippo Riders are always a little sketchy because you really want tier 3 and a Hunter's Hall and Marksmanship for them. And you rely on your Ancient Wars surviving rather than being defensive buildings. Because you need to produce archers, you need to get marksmanship. So they can be sketchy, but if you do pull it off, they can have a lot of damage. On the other side, Archer is already hitting a uh, potential timing here soon. He's got two wagons. Uh, he's got his second necro, or no, this is research. Okay, maybe his timing is still a ways away. He didn't actually get the necros he needed. He did have one picked off by Debaser early on. And now going for the research. So a bit of a bit of time where Debaser is still in control. He's gonna get some creeping done. And once all these archers get picked up, once the next few hippos come out. Yeah, like once this next set of hippos arrives. We could see the baser just dive in with five hippo riders plus the panda and just wipe out the acolytes and towers and that could be huge does he go for the hit and run or is he just gonna creep creeping is also not bad if you get a level five panda especially it's huge but even panda will lose effectiveness if there's tons of skellies on the field however with only one necromancer tons of skellies is not really a thing so far and yeah, it is just going to be the hit and run. We got the, the five Hippo Riders. And he's picking off the Necromancer. Ooh, nice quick TP from Nortakar, but ooh, nice position from it. Does pick off a Hippo Rider that is minus four food. Hippo Riders are very costly to lose, but the breath will clean up, I believe a beetle and secure the level four on the Panda. Also, forcing the TP does make Nortokar have to decide if he wants to ever buy another TP. And I don't think you can't. I think with this Necromancer one base timing push, you can't afford another teleport. You're going to have to just all in the opponent's expansion and accept the fact that your base might get demolished by Panda Breath. He's going to try to creep first though, and this is giving the time to base her needs. He's just going to go in and wipe the zig uh, yeah, the ziggurats. And now all the baser needs to do is make sure he has enough wisps at home. Because he can just keep detonating everything. And yeah, it's going to be one ziggurat falling from the next breath. And Norchakar's just going for the push. It's going to be a bit of a base trade. Can the baser do enough before TPing back? Or is it just going to be a full trade? Because honestly, there's not very many buildings here. Oh, but these these are just hippos. Does he have more archers? No, he made too many hippos. Oh, this was my worry. Because he had only one defensive ancient war making archers. If this ancient war dies like it did, you suddenly just don't have archers. And now you just have these hippos doing nothing. And the panda! Oh my god, the panda! <laughs> he almost lost the panda! I still think this is very winnable for the baser if he has a shot, but he does not. It died here too! Oh no, the panda has no healing. I don't think this was a bad call by the baser, but he needed to have a healthier panda before he... You know, or when he TP'd out. Oh, and the Impale comes in! Maybe the ping is too high for him, I'm not sure. 
But uh, that did not go according to plan. I think Sebaser thought he was in a good spot, but the, the counter push was just too much. He had too many hippos that didn't have archers in them. There's, what, four hippos without archers on them? That's uh, eight food wasted. That could have just been four fairies instead. But the panda is back and healed. However, the cripplord's already six. The super beetles are here. And with air units in low count and no mana on the panda, I don't know if he can do it. I think this is going to be Norchakar taking the victory. We see the orb. We see some potions. Panda trying to do what he can. Panda is a beast, but he's only level 4. If he could have got level 5, maybe you can try to do something with huge breaths. But level 4, I'm not sure if this is really enough. Oh, next breath. Nice breath. Takes him out. Level 5 Panda. Shop is still up in the back. If he can get some more potions and some more breaths. Maybe even some detonates on these beetles. I think the beetles are the problem though. He needs detonates for them. But the Panda can actually take out the fiends over time. He's got invuln and heal potions still. He's got double rings as well. Nice breath there. Takes out the statue. The one fiend burrowed is low. The beetles are a little softened up. The fiends are all softened up. Can he get another couple breaths off? Huge breath there. Look at all these fiends so low. And there's actually dust in the elf shop. Dust is picked up as well, but I don't think there's much for potions left. <laughs> the baser the baser's taking out so much. I never even checked. What does Norchakar have left? Is he even mining properly? There's only one Acolyte mining. Is the Baser winning this? Is the Baser... Is the, is the Panda winning? That was why the Baser was so, was so content to still try here. Is because he did actually wipe out most of the Acolytes. And he wiped out multiple Ziggurats. Norchakar was supply blocked until his fiends died. And so he's only now able to produce acolytes again. And we have a game. <laughs> what is going on, dude? And the panda is going to be nearing six soon. The problem for Debaser though, is these moon wells are low. He needs more moon wells and it's going to be daytime. What's he going to do? Is it going to be a staff? We got Invis Potion, but no staff. And he does need some clarities too. But this game is still up in the air. It looked like Norchakar was about to take it, but I didn't actually see how much of the, the economy was damaged of Norchakar. And it, do, it did seem like uh, the Baser took out four Acolytes plus multiple Ziggurats before TPing out. And that was huge. That's what he needed to do. But now Nortikar is stabilized again. He's got five Acolytes on gold. He's going to be able to add in a couple Ziggurats here in a second. And he's going to have a real army. He might even sell the Periapt and buy like some mana potions. <laughs> the baser not going to be too happy seeing this. And he does not actually have a Staff of Telly or a TP. So this is a very risky play if he goes in. He really needs to either know for sure that he can hit level 6 and get out, or he needs something like Staffatelli, and he does go for Staffatelli. Now it is still risky. If Norchakar is just sitting here, he can get surrounded and not even be required to impale. Oh, but Norchakar heads his hero out too! So the panda is safe for now. Does he go for the Necros and Statues or just the Acolytes? Going for the Acolytes. And I think that's the right call. He should be able to get a couple here, probably. Yeah, he's trying to get in position for these ones. Might even damage the Ziggurat as well. And is he going to staff out right away? He needs to staff out just before the Crypt Lord arrives. And it was such awkward timing. Nortakar is like, yo, I'm going to go pick up a heal scroll. 
because he's not tier three. He can't buy it from his relics yet. He, he heads to the shop to do it. And right at that moment, the baser pops in, kills a couple acolytes, softens up the ziggurat, and staffs out with no impale to stop him. Crippler did actually have mana as well. He did finally get his mana up after summoning the beetles. So he has a couple hundred. But yeah, for the baser, <clears throat> I like this. Now just fairies, try to get up an expo. And honestly, the next things for the baser is to get a TP and to just hit and run. With level five panda, you can afford to hit and run the rest of the game. These ziggurats, the acolytes, they're just gonna die if you hit and run. And Norchakar needs to somehow manage to get enough army like he had before to just try to push through and win. He does have a lot of beetles, which are huge for pressuring, but they can technically be detonated if Debaser has enough wisps for it. And yeah, there's there's a lot of fairies building up here now. We got some more moon wells on the way. The baser's supply is a little low. Panda playing with a bit of fire here. Looks like he wants to go in, try to get some kills, but he's going to have to run. He's going to get turned on and impaled. One hippo is going to get killed as well. Impale comes in. Panda is low. Gets the necro kill and goes for the breath as well. The breath is actually significant when it hits the mechanical units like the wagon and the statues. But these fiends will slowly heal up over time with Blight, with Burrow, with Statue Heal. So it's mostly the damage on the wagon that counts. And what's the play? Does he go for TPs yet? Does he go for more invulns? He's going for the invis potion. Playing very risky. He's got low health. Invis in and no TP scroll yet. This might be the panda dying if he go home. He's just gonna die. Baits out the impale. <laughs> the boots were fast enough to run away from that impale. Impale gets wasted. And the baser just doing some cheeky little damage. Another impale! Oh no! You can't, you can't impale max range against a hero with boots. They're just gonna run out. Run out of range. <laughs> the panda is doing the hit and runs by himself. Next breath. Wipes out the acolyte. Two necros are really low. He needs to heal them. And the statue also low. The wagon half health. And, and Nortikar is like, yo, how do I stop this dude? He's just running in. Oh, nice play to just staff back here. But I still want to see the baser actually pick up a TP scroll. It might even be time to sell the staff and sell the boots, pick up a TP scroll and just do hit and runs that way with your entire army. Because now he actually has an army to do so, right? This is a sizable army. He's got what, nine fairies, more on the way. He's got an expansion fully running. And with nine fairies and level, or you know, max level breath, you can quickly take out this. You don't, you don't need to do the solo hero stuff anymore. This is risky. Super risky. He's going in with another Invis Potion. No TP again. So, and his his staff is on cooldown. Staff is on cooldown, by the way, because he staffed home to get clarities and stuff. So, this is super risky. Now, I don't hate this, where he's just kind of keeping vision of them. Not a bad breath. Takes out the relics, which is significant that does stop uh, statue production if Nortrakar wanted more statues. It prevents him from buying more mana potions and stuff like that. And he softened the wagon up. <laughs> oh no. This turned into such a weird game. Oh no. The impale. Does he staff out or does he run? He's going for the run. Does a turnaround breath. He sees the Crip Lord has low mana, but the Crip Lord has a mana potion. But the boots are fast enough. Panda just running around, having himself a good old time. But it needs to be a little careful there that the Crip Lord could go for an impale here. Oh, P 
Panda pops his potion as well. Both sides popping potions. Panda going to get slowed. There's another Impale. The Panda's dead. I think. Panda's just dead. Right? Impale? Is this enough? Oh my... The statue hits. Oh my... Every little bit of damage counting there. The Panda just dies. Oh no, and this is why I kept saying to base her playing with fire. There was no need to do that anymore. He's already close to six. He had a sizable army. He really just needed to buy a TP and do proper hit and runs. But now with the panda dead, he's reliant on sneaking by, not getting webbed, not getting webbed. Oh no, he's just going to fight right away without his hero. Oh my god. He's not even going to wait for the resources for the hero. He's just going to try to take out the Necros, but fairies are not going to beat Skelly Mages. Oh no, Debaser. What looked like the comeback after he was almost dead and out is suddenly him losing everything. <laughs> oh no. You play with fire and sometimes you get burnt. And, uh. That one's going to hurt. Okay, game five. Norchakar getting... Getting some sneaky wins, to be honest. The second game, Debaser was ahead, but he had some poor macro at some point and had like 2k gold against the bush. The third game, Norchakar pulls off a sneaky creep route, gets his Cripplord to like basically level three while Debaser was sitting there at like no XP outside Norchkar's base, just wondering what's going on. And then this, the fourth game. Oh my God. What can you even say about that fourth game? That was, uh, I liked the baser's play. I liked his style to do some of these hit and runs. I liked that he, he took out the ziggurats and the acolytes before TPing. But, ah. Uh, just, uh, just needed that little bit more than what he had at the end. It needed to not lose the panda. But losing the panda just kind of ended it for him. And this game five looks like we are going to see Keeper once again. No more Tavern Hero. But it will still be Hunts, it seems. And on the other side for Nortrakar, he is going back to his straight fiend build instead of the quick altar. Uh, this will make it easier for Debaser to spot where the Crypt Lord is creeping, as we saw in the first two games, and could result in Debaser taking out the Fiends again. But he does still need to keep track of them a bit. There's a lot of critters here. Uh, this map has a lot of critters close by in this area, this area. And so on. So we could have actually seen the fast Crypt Lord like we saw in the last couple games and just you know get a bunch of summons right away there and creep off at like the you know side kobolds or like murlocs. But he's just gonna do a slow fiend build again, early Nerubian. And this early Nerubian is gonna deter a lot of the aggression. It covers this area and this area. Very hard for the keeper to really get in there and do much. Gonna have to wait until the Crypt Lord and the Fiends come out. And yeah, we are going to have double Ancient of War, classic Debaser style, full in Huntresses. We are probably seeing a tower push this time instead of the, you know, tech type build. And it's going to be Treants first. He wants to use the Treants to potentially steal the creep. And the Crypt Lord got it. And the Treants instead are just going to be fed over. 
So a bit of XP going Norchikar's way here from the Treants, and he's got two Fiends, a lot of summons, no Wisp Dettos. This Wisp was pulled pretty far back and not used, and no more Wisps are being added either. Uh, he does want to keep mining, because if he is tower pushing like I think he is, then mining that wood kind of matters. But I think getting some big detonates off are also pretty huge. And there's a lot of summons here he could be detonating. But the Wisp not going for it. Keeper moving all the way back. Looks like he wants to creep himself with the Treants. Maybe heal a bit as well. And it is tier 1. Do we have any early upgrades? No upgrades yet. But the Wisp, one Wisp moving out to the Expo. Might see the other Wisps move out soon as well to put APs potentially here. Or here. Here. Plus a few places. Crypt Lord moving out. Trying to steal some camps. Trying to get that level 3. And getting that level 3 is always pretty huge. Because once you get the higher level beetles, you force the elf to use two wisps every time they want to kill the beetles. And, I mean, that can be pretty significant. It's 120 gold every time they want to detonate them. And if they're not getting a lot of beetles with each detonate, well, then it's kind of bad for them. Of course, if they do hit the beetle, like all of the beetles, then it's pretty huge. But the Crypt Lord's getting what he wants. He's going to be level 3 here in a sec. And the Keeper is just continuing to creep himself. Looks like he wants to get level 3 first. Is he still going to push? He is going to push, it seems. We got a damage upgrade. We got Glaives on the way. A Glaive Huntress. So just one Glaive at first. But it does seem to be a tower push. Oh, and we could see an impale steal. Oh, it will still go to debaser, and he gets he gets still just level one roots. Maybe a mistake. But he gets the item, he gets level 3, and he's trying to go for the fiends here, but there's a lot of summons that are doing a ton of damage. The hunts are all dropping low. The fiends are falling as well, but I don't think it's worth all the hunts dying here. And look at all these summons! You need wisps against this. I think Norchikar is going to take this one too. The hunts were not able to make use of the fountain. The Crypt Lord's already level 4 off of all these Huntress kills and there's still two fiends left and all the beetles. I think if there was a wisp or two there to just detto the summons right away, Debaser actually crushes that fight and forces a TP. But you see what a difference it makes. If you don't have wisps to deal with these beetles, they're actually pretty strong, even against elf. But that, that's the thing, right? Elf should be able to have access to the Wisps. They should be able to take them out. And then it can be highly in the Elf's favor. But sometimes you just caught out, get caught out at a camp you're not expecting and don't have the Wisps readily available. And the base are going to try to go back in here again. He does have quite a few Huntresses and paired alongside the Entangle. Should be able to clean up these Fiends. But there's still the beetles doing quite a lot of damage as well. It's going to be two fiends down, but one huntress also fell. Two hunts are weak and cannot use the fountain properly either with it being daytime. And burrow on the other fiend to save it for now. The base are trying to kill the beetles, but... We'll get level four off of this. Baser's doing an okay amount of damage here, but what's his plan behind this, right? Because he stayed tier 1, he's got double Ancient of War, like he's kind of doing an all-in, but his entire army is weak. He, he cleared the fiends, but without, without an army you can't actually end the game with any sort of push. 
You can sell the crystal ball still or use it to reveal the burrowed fiends if it's off cooldown. I can't tell if it's off cooldown or not. But you could also just sell it, maybe sell the TP as well, buy heal scrolls, try to do something with that and still try to push. We do see the heal scroll. Will he pop it right away? Saving it for now and we have banshees and statues on the field. Once the undead has their tier 2 online, and in this case, actually tier 3 with A-bombs, it's very hard to all in. Like, they're just going to be able to produce wagons if they need. Statues plus blight is just so huge at diminishing any damage that comes in. These sort of all in pushes from elf are not meant to be, uh, to take this long. And I think Norchakar is in a commanding position here. The play for the baser is honestly to probably expand. But yeah, I don't, I don't think he can just do that either. So he's going to just all in here. We got a second glaive coming, but this glaive puts him at 51 food. He really needs one of the wisps to to be morphed into a tower just to get him below 50. Preferably before he sells items as well, so you get more gold. But he does sell it at 50 gold. Oh, is this to the ring of superiority? That's not worth much anyways. I imagine he'll sell the crystal ball too. He's at 50 food now. Selling the crystal ball could be huge at getting that extra gold to make the towers. But is it going to be enough? There's two Banshees, there's a Disease Cloud A-bomb, the Crypt Lord's almost level 5, two statues, three fiends. This is a sizable army for the Undead. And this is going to be a level 5 Crypt Lord if he clears the Ogre. But... Towers are coming up, and I think they're visible. Yeah, we see ghouls moving forward. No wagon queued up. The base are just going to run away. Is he going to fight? If he gets some nice detos off on the Crypt Lord and Beetles, and some Entangles, maybe take out the Fiends, it could be okay. But the huge Impale, all of the Wisps are so low. If he can get some hits off, oh, nice heal scroll to counter it. The Wisps are moving in. But there's not actually many beetles to Deto right now. He needs to wait until more beetles get summoned. Another huge Impale. And this Crippler just has so much mana. He's got Wanda Mana Stealing as well. All the hunts are falling. The Baser's army is crumbling. He wanted to do this push so much sooner. That was not a huge Impale though. But at this point, the Undead army is just too strong. The Baser's push was not at the timing he wanted. And it was, it was the fight at his expansion. It just didn't go the way he wanted. And he lost way too many hunts there. It was not able to push. GG is called. And Norchakar secures the 